Okay, so I'm making one, hopefully one final video on how to talk into the uh, Blue Yeti in a way that you won't be popping your P's and B's. It's all about the way you talk into the microphone that really affects it. This is a good broadcast quality microphone, but like any other microphone, if you don't talk to it the right way, you will be popping. So, first off, you see here it's not on, no red light on the Yeti. So I've got my USB cord right here. I've actually already plugged it in into the back of the computer. We'll take this, which is the other end of the USB cord that came with your Yeti. Plug it in right here. And I'm going to move it closer so perhaps you can see right here is where you plug it in. So plug it in and now you can see the light is in fact red. So the second thing I want you to do is take a pair of headphones, any ordinary headphones work, anything you use to listen to an iPod or another MP3 player or maybe if you have an old-fashioned Walkman would suffice. So in this case, I take my pair of headphones and again I'm going to go to the underside of the microphone here and hopefully you can see right here it's a little headphone jack. You want to plug your headphones in right there. So your USB port and your headphone port. The light is red, meaning that the Yeti is working. So you've got your headphones on, you've got it working. So the first thing before you actually start talking to the microphone is I want you to take a couple look at a couple of things. First I'm going to start on the back here. As you can probably see on the back here we've got two different areas. I'm going to start on the bottom here. This bottom knob is talking about the four different types of microphones that you have here. So as you can, you may or may not see here, I have it set on the third one. It kind of looks like a heart. It's the second one from the right, third overall. That is the cardioid setting. You've got a couple other ones here among the four omnidirectional and bidirectional, but the one we want to use for Skype and Skype interviews is the one that's shaped like a heart, the uh, third one on the list here. Second thing I want to show you here is the gain, which is up here, and I don't know if you could actually see the word gain, but that controls the actual volume with which the microphone delivers audio. Now, when I turn the microphone around in a second, you're going to see I'm going to be fairly close. So, what I want you to do is not really have that gain up too high. As you can see here, I've got it at about 7 o'clock. If you assume that this, which is all the way down to its lowest setting, is about 6 o'clock, and then this all the way on the other end is about five o'clock somewhere between so they consider that maybe six thirty not too much beyond the lowest level I would say seven eight o'clock nine o'clock is even okay I would not go anywhere near twelve o'clock I'd have it somewhere between seven and nine so those are the two things on the back of the microphone I want you to take a look at here on the front of the microphone, and this is the side you want to speak towards, this is where the, right here, the buds of the microphone are on the front face of the microphone. Here is the uh, volume level for your headphones. You may be able to see a headphone uh, jack right there. That just controls the volume with which you can hear yourself and hear the person speaking to you on Skype through your headphones. So you can have that wherever you want. It doesn't really affect the quality of what you're saying over your microphone. However, it sounds good to you so that you can hear through your headphones is fine. And the only other thing is you see the red light here. You want to make sure it's solid red. If it's blinking red, that means the microphone is muted. So solid red is the one that we want. So I'm going to pull the microphone back over here. Now, again, you want to talk. This is the area of the microphone that is going to pick you up. You don't want to be speaking up here. You don't want to be speaking back here. Not here, not back here. This is the area. If you imagine like a circle coming out of the microphone or an oval coming out of the microphone, that's the area it's going to pick you up. So you can tilt it. I, I sometimes tilt the microphone. You can leave it flat. It really depends on how you sit. You know, if you're high up here and now I'm out, kind of out of the shot, I would be above the microphone if I'm down here, I'm more kind of slightly above it. Maybe if I move the chair down, which I can do, I'd be more even faced. However you want to tilt the microphone is fine. So I'm going to tilt it up a little bit because I'm a little bit taller than the microphone. Here's the most important part. When you're talking into the microphone for a Skype interview, you want to be like this. 
I'm using the fist as a sort of determination. You want to be about here when you're talking into the microphone. You don't want to be farther back. If I'm back here, that's way too far. Even if I tilted the microphone like this, still way too far. Could live if you're this close, but this might be a little too close for comfort. I would use the fist and I would say about this distance away. The second thing I want to mention to you, which is just as important as the distance, because again, the distance has to be exactly in the spot where you want it to be, is how you talk into the microphone. So, I don't want you to talk directly into the face of the microphone. This is the part of the microphone that's going to pick you up, but if you talk directly like this into the front of the microphone, it's going to pick up your P's and your B's and it's going to pop. The term that we use in radio is plosives. You don't want that. You want your P's and your B's to just sound natural. So the way that you can avoid that is to kind of talk off to the side of the microphone. And it looks like I'm talking into the, the camera here. That's actually not necessarily true. I'm talking off to the side of the microphone. You can even see I'm kind of tilting myself to the side of the microphone. I'm not exactly seated right behind the microphone itself. So I'm talking like this and I'm talking off to the side of the microphone. If you wanted to kind of look at it the other way, I could tilt myself a little bit off to this side and talk this way, a little bit off to the side of the microphone. You don't need to put your head here. That's going to, again, ruin kind of the quality of the sound because there are no buds here on this part of the microphone or up here. You still want to be behind the microphone but you want to talk this way instead of talking this way. You want to talk this way. You kind of want to talk across the microphone, across the microphone, talk in this direction. So the two things you want to remember to maximize how you sound on your Eddie is one, the distance, being about this distance away from the microphone. You don't want to be too far away. Anywhere between this distance and, you know, this distance will, will kind of work. Use, again, your fist as sort of a barometer of how far you want to be from the microphone. And then the second thing that's very important is how you talk to the microphone. Talk this way. Talk to, to us like this. This is what's going on in the community. This is why the issue is important, as opposed to talking this way and how this is an important issue and this is why it's an important issue. You want to talk this way. This is an issue that's very important, and I'll explain to you why. By talking off to the side of the microphone, you don't have the P's and the B's popping, a plosives issue that we have in radio. That's the way to avoid it. So distance and the way you talk into the microphone are the two most important things on how you can maximize using the Blue Yeti, whether it be for podcasting on your own or talking to us on Skype.